Today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. 
audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. 
Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. 
Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. I note the one apology from Councillor Cox. Declaration of interest. Any declaration of interest? No. Confirmation of minutes. Somebody moved the minutes of the meeting held the 11th of July. Moved Councillor Dawkins. Seconded Councillor Soward. 
All those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. There's no deputations, no petitions. Community report. Liz? Liz Franklin? Take it over. Okay, Liz. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at this meeting and share with you information about the Junction Arts Festival. Junction exists to bring quality arts and cultural experiences to Launceston in a nine-year tradition of celebrating our community through the presentation of contemporary art. Led by a dynamic team, Junction presents the work of Tasmanian artists across all stages of career development. We mentor young people, building their expertise in arts and festival management, and through community collaboration, we cross-pollinate arts experiences into the mainstream. Artists cherish the authenticity of our festival, in which everyone experiences an immersive, intimate, northern experience unique to Junction. And by continuing collaborations with Tasmanian artists, the benefits are long-lasting. Junction projects anchor themselves within the community through outreach and partnerships with a diverse mix of organisations, unifying them through the creation of new work. It is a festival for all. It is intergenerational and accessible. The 2019 festival program was launched on the 5th of July at Sawtooth Ari. It was a wonderful celebration that signalled the beginning of Junction 2019. This year's program features over 30 free and ticketed events in and around the festival hub in the beautiful Princess Square. The 2019 program features cabaret, comedy and children's shows. The Fountain Bar returns showcasing a lineup of 100% Tasmanian musical talent. Nightlight returns this year with nine immersive art installations and performances and theatre and dance performances by Muggler, Taz Dance, Interweave and Stompen explore the hidden spaces in the park and CBD. Campfire sessions in the forecourt of the Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre will invite audiences to hear stories about First Nations artists. St John's Church plays host to the second of the breathtaking series. Open House One Session returns inviting you into some intriguing buildings and the Tweed Run is back. In last year's Nitty Gritty by Rachel Berger, we heard powerful, funny and courageous stories from members of our community who had never been on stage before. Inspired by their resilience, grit and sense of humour, we're doing it again this year with two new themes, embarrassments and triumphs. In 2020, we celebrate Junction's 10th anniversary. Thank you for the support Junction has received from the City of Launceston since 2011. We truly believe our festival unites, empowers and celebrates our wonderful community. Yeah, thanks very much, Liz. Thank you very much for that report. Please pass on our thanks to the board and all those involved. And I know there's many, many volunteers that get involved as well. So it is appreciated by us and therefore we're willing to support it by all of council and we appreciate what it adds to our city and what it brings to using one of our great parks in the city as well. So well done and thank you. So we move on. There's no deputations. Oh, we've done that. Public question time. I don't think any of our staff are going to ask a question. <laughs> so we'll move on. The questions previously there. No, plan no planning applications. Announcements by the Mayor. I just want to say that should be announcements by the Acting Mayor that are there. Just so we know, it's clarification. But I will raise um, one item before I did go on leave on the 8th of July. It was a pleasure to attend the um, NAIDOC Week flag raising ceremony, but also to attend the forum, NAIDOC Week, and to chair that. And that was a, a real eye opener for myself to, to listen to some of the stories from people from the Aboriginal community. It was uh, very eye opening and very challenging, and something that I learnt a lot through. So I really appreciate that and encourage anybody who gets a chance to hear the stories, to listen to them, and to understand them. And over to you, uh, Deputy Mayor. 
Uh, thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to point out one item of interest, the Bhutanese Interstate Championships that were held so successfully at a variety of venues, but particularly at Churchill Park. It was a real pleasure, together with a number of staff, to attend on Friday um, to witness a number of interstate teams competing in their soccer championships. Um, of course, as most of us would be aware, the Bhutanese community have been in Tasmania for over 10 years and the opportunity for them to celebrate their culture and connection through sport and through uh, welcoming, I guess, players from other states of Australia to Launceston, again into their homes, into their family and to rekindle uh, the friendships that were formed during their times before they arrived in Australia was really special. The organisers were, fair to say, overwhelmed by the support and service that the City of Launceston staff provided to them and uh, asked me on the Sunday when we were handing out innumerable numbers of certificates, trophies and medals to recognise the, the work of Lisa Granger in particular, who supported them every step of the way. So, General Manager, if you could pass that on. Um, they were very, very appreciative and, Mayor, their only sadness in the whole um, of the week was that you were unable to be with them oh, I'm sure. uh, for the event. Because they, seriously, they have appreciated the support that you've provided for them uh, over a number of years. Thank you for that. Uh, any other councillor reports? No? Questions by councillors? Councillor Spencer. Thanks, Mayor. Um, seeing as I, I, I haven't been working much lately, I've been on the computer a bit, and I've I'm concerned about the Tamer River. Um, is there any chance in us buying a dredge? Um, they are around three to five million dollars for good dredges, and I think it's an opportunity with this money we've got coming that we could do something to try and fix the river. General Manager, wish to comment? Thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's probably a bit premature to sort of make a decision in respect of buying a dredge. Um, I think part of the siltation management. It's sediment management across the, the, the Tamar estuary is a, is a problem that we, we do need to, to resolve in partnership with the TIA group that, that we are working with um, and the, 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 the task force um, that is established basically to provide uh, improved governance for the, the, the Tamar. It's certainly something that's being actively considered at the moment. So for, for mine, it's one, let's park that and, and include that as part of the broader consideration, but certainly it's something that we are actively working with our partners to... Um, to progress. Thank you. Any other questions without notice? No, we can move on. The Northern Youth Coordinating Committee report. Somebody happy to move that? Deputy Mayor. Second to Councillor McKenzie. Do you wish to speak to Deputy Mayor? Uh, just to say that um, everything is listed there, as you can appreciate, with a number of stakeholders coming together to celebrate and um, lobby and work on behalf of young people. Lots of very interesting things occur. I note that the Youth Development Officer, Claudia, is in the gallery today to recognise the Claudia Taylor is in the ga gallery today to recognise the work that she does. She really is a leader within the youth sector and uh, new youth officers and other councils turn to her um, in terms of support and mentoring, so we're very lucky. And uh, we have a number of committees and initiatives through community development um, that are occurring for the betterment of young people in Launceston and further afield, and that should be celebrated. Uh, thank you. Councillor McKenzie? Just to just acknowledge the, the depth of the body of work that's actually undertaken by this group, where you look at mental health, which is a huge... Uh, issue in society in general, but particularly amongst young people, and to sort of deal with those, you know, to use a pun, head on. I think in the conversations that are taking place at the, the coordinated group is, I think, something that's laudable and uh, and hopefully uh, will bear fruit in regards to better services for for young people. And again, anything that sort of reflects on smoke-free uh, city would be uh, something of great benefit to us all. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak? Do you wish to close, Deputy? Uh, just to say, the 23rd of October should be a date that people should put in their diaries and come along to Door of Hope and be part of that Mental Health Day. Thank you. With that, I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. 12.2, uh, Tender Review Committee. Do we have a mover? Councillor Spencer. 
Is there a seconder? Councillor Dow, Deputy Mayor. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Spencer? No. Deputy Mayor. Any councillor wish to speak? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. 13.1 is council workshop report. Anyone like to move that? Deputy Mayor. Councillor Finlay. Deputy Mayor, you wish to speak, comment? Um, just briefly, um, obviously everything is listed there, but I do think it's appropriate to recognise the wonderful session that we had last Thursday with regard to the Launceston Human Library. The Human Library has been in existence for over 10 years, an initiative of Natalie Savant through our own community development department. And uh, the opportunity for us as elected members and staff to hear the first-hand experiences, stories, um, sharings from human books was insightful, emotional, moving, inspiring, all of the, um, all of the feels, and um, most importantly, left us with a sense of um, gratitude as to the opportunity that our organisation has, sometimes in those less known, smaller initiatives to lift people up, to help build community, to make our community welcoming, inclusive and safe. So uh, it was a unique lunch. It was a great opportunity for us to do something together, but more importantly, to learn from the books that came along and shared their story. And I'm sure um, everyone left lunch moved as a result, uh, or affected as a result of that experience. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Councillor Finlay, any other speakers? Councillor Spencer? I, I agree with what Danny actually said. That's one of the best things I've done since I've been on this council, to go to that library the other day. It was very moving. The only problem, we, we couldn't have got around everyone. We should have had more time and it was very moving and I'll appreciate it. It's the best thing I've done since I've been on council. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Uh, Deputy Mayor, you wish to close? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. So then we move on to 14.1. Notice a motion from Councillor Gibson, Deputy Mayor. Moving it and second to Councillor McKenzie. Do you wish to speak to it, Deputy Mayor? Uh, just briefly, I hope everyone agrees that um, there's a deal of information there and it's self-explanatory. What I wanted to do, though, was to expand upon the long uh, list of initiatives that our organisation has in terms of standing up for marginalised groups, recognising the opportunities that exist to play a leadership role. And for a number of years, our efforts through community development and specifically capacity building for young people have been identified. We have um, opportunities, as you just heard, through the... Um, the Northern Youth Coordinating Committee through our own YAG Youth Advisory Group. We're doing some amazing work in the northern suburbs through the My Place, My Future plan. And we're working with the um, My Ch um, Every Child Succeeds Conference through the Child Friendly Initiative. Um, and there are a whole raft of initiatives that this council has in play through a variety of different departments, community development and others, to um, build up our young people. Here is an opportunity for us to um, partner with All About Babies, a grassroots event um, that really doesn't fit in any category of formalised sponsorship and thus um, has, has not been funded through any traditional categories. Um, and so here is an opportunity, I think, for us to uh, build a partnership, a strategically aligned partnership with a new event that caters for a demographic that we are wanting to celebrate, to shape a Launceston for, and we're wanting to cater for. And so I hope you will uh, appreciate the $2,000 from our existing community development budget for that purpose would be a good spend. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Councillor McKenzie. Thanks, Mayor. I will speak just for a moment. I remember speaking on this matter when it came as part of the community grants a few weeks ago. And I think most around the room expressed, um, I guess, uh, um, I guess the standards that we could support it based on the criteria that's used for that. And I'm really pleased to see uh, the Mayor bring this back under the uh, uh, community development budget. Process to deal with the issues that um, 
uh, need to have process to deal with the issues uh, that come under particular agenda items. It's great where we look at something and say this is something that we should be funding uh, and then we find a way to do it within our existing framework. So I congratulate the Deputy Mayor for bringing that back. Uh, thank you. Any other speakers? Deputy, you wish to close? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. Move on to 17.1. Reconciliation Tasmania. Councillor Walker. Uh, uh, Mayor, I wish to raise to put forward an alternate motion for 17.1. Yeah, can you read that, please? Um, that the Council support pursuing reconciliation with the Aboriginal community and to defer adoption of a reconciliation plan to enable an opportunity for further consultation. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor McKenzie. Sorry. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Walker? Yes, I do. Um, I will begin by acknowledging Aboriginal Elders past and present and emerging. I'll acknowledge that I walk on Aboriginal land and that it always was and it always will be Aboriginal land. I congratulate Launceston City Council for beginning a process of reconciliation and I ask that we all work, walk this journey together. I don't suppose that I have all the answers as to how we reconcile with, our, with first Tasmanians. Um, that's for the leaders from this council to respectfully uh, seek with leaders from the Aboriginal community. But I do want the opportunity for this council to talk with the broader Aboriginal community before we enter into arrangements with any particular organisation. Um, I simply implore the Council to pursue this action um, before taking a, a particular course uh, to speak to the broader Aboriginal community and to allow opportunity for that to occur. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Question from Councillor Soward. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, so probably Councillor Walker or even the GM, any original motion that's before us it actually talks about, in the original motion, it talks about working with Reconciliation Tasmania to develop a Reconciliation Action Plan. Councillor Walker's alternate motion talks about deferring the adoption of a Reconciliation Action Plan. Well, my question is, we don't actually have a Reconciliation Action Plan to adopt, do we? No. We, we have... No, we don't. That's correct. That's right. Good week. Thank you. Councillor McKenzie. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Look, I'll just take the, a brief opportunity to, to, to comment on the, the, the revised motion. I guess um, I take uh, confidence from uh, uh, Councillor Walker and uh, the, uh, the, com the confidences he shared with us in regards to the Aboriginal people and his knowledge, uh, which probably is far better than mine in many of these things, um, because ultimately the, game, the, the name of the game for me is to be able to reconcile, reconcile with all Aboriginals of Tasmania, uh, however that comes about. And if this pause in proceedings enables us to do that, then I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Councillor McKenzie, any other councillors wish to speak? Deputy Mayor. Are you on a question? Is that? Sorry, I apologise here. Question. Um, so further to uh, Councillor Soward's question, Item two is perplexing to me because it doesn't make sense. It says defers adoption of a reconciliation plan to enable an opportunity for further consultation. Um, should it say defer the creation of rather than... Pardon? Consideration. Consideration. Mm, development of. I, I don't quite think the wording is correct. Yep, no, correct. That's probably a fair point. Councillor Walker, you... What word would you like? Suggest. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give me a minute to, to isn't read. Isn't it really deferring considering a reconciliation? No? No, okay. Yeah, the creation of, development of. Okay, yep, true. The creation of. I'm happy with that, Mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Well, can we make that part of the motion or do we have to move and amend it? No, we we'll, can move for a second. Yeah. Move for a second. Happy with that? That defers the creation of a reconciliation plan. To... Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. Any other speakers? Question, Councillor Sauer? Thanks, Mayor. And um, just around, to help my understanding, uh, not that I'm not supportive of what Councillor Walker's doing, and I'm much happier now with point two, because it makes sense. Um, is it the normal process when you're creating a reconciliation action plan to actually go through reconciliation Tasmania? So my question is, is that the normal process that's used? Sorry. No. Look, look, I don't think there is a normal process. There's, there's a process that, and obviously there's a group that are, are providing that service to, to you know, entities such as ourselves, and um, you know we're seeking to be able to use those um, that, that skills and knowledge. But there's obviously multiple ways that, that you can go about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other speakers? Question, Councillor Finlay. I think it's always important with items like this that if we're looking to defer an action, that we have some sense of timing. I'm wondering through you to the general manager. Um, how, as an organisation, we might go through the consultation and what sort of time that might take? General Manager. Yeah, look, it's pretty difficult to be able to stand here now and say and give you a, a time frame, given that it, this is obviously additional work in amongst uh, our existing workload that we now need to find time to do, which we will. But I would, I mean, as preference as General Manager would be to keep it a little bit open at the moment to allow us time to, to deliver it. But I would expect that you're talking. Um, you're talking a month or two, I would have thought, to be able to allow for sufficient time. So, thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Sowers. Sorry, you have a question anymore? No. Any other speakers? Our Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. I um, I. I'm finding it hard to support this alternate motion simply because in supporting number one supports pursuing reconciliation with our Aboriginal community. That's for me the overarching rationale behind having uh, a reconciliation action plan. And um, I, I believe that it's important for us to initiate a process to do that to enable us to engage with all members of the Aboriginal community to uh, move forward and find a way of, um, as peoples, moving forward. And so um, I kind of feel like in, in um, deferring consideration of the development of a reconciliation plan, we're having uh, an, an impact which is almost a do-nothing impact. And for me, I believe that the process for initiating a process to move from where we are to a future that is better, uh, that uh, recognises the atrocities of the past and finds a way of reconciling those in a way where, as peoples, we can move forward, that the Reconciliation Action Plan will see us consult with all members of the Tasmanian Aboriginal community, all groups, and that um, they would be the core actions that would underpin a plan. Um, yeah. Thank you. Question for Councillor Finlay with it. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I find it really important when we've got items like this before us that there's clarity. So we're deferring the creation of the reconciliation plan to enable an opportunity for further consultation. My question of clarification is, for what purpose is the consultation? Is that um, to seek uh, participation in the process of a reconciliation plan or to consult on reconciliation? Because they, what's the task that's been consulted? Because I think that's important, because otherwise when it comes back, if the intention of the mover of that consultation and the um, action of the organisation don't match, we might not be any further advanced. So is there, is the consultation in point two to determine of the many Aboriginal communities locally um, that they are open to the idea of working together on a reconciliation plan? Answer that. I suppose, put simply, I, I can't answer that because I can't speak on behalf of the Aboriginal community. Um, I can say that uh, thought was put into the alternate motion insofar as um, not rejecting 
uh, the idea of a reconciliation plan, rather to merely provide opportunity for discussion with the broader community. Uh, a discussion, I might note, has not been had. Um, so we, we are discussing here a reconciliation plan for Tasmanian Aboriginal people. So we're, so we're discussing, uh, just to finish my point, we're discussing a reconciliation plan uh, that is in regards to Aboriginal people without necessarily having talked to that broader Aboriginal community first. So my only point in making this uh, alternate motion is that I ensure that we do talk to the broader community. You, are you clear on what this motion says, General Manager? As always, again, we will seek to, to, to consult with as, as a broader group of representatives um, from the Aboriginal um, community as we're able to, and obviously we'll undertake research through the channels that we're able to understand who they are, and we'll seek to we'll, we'll seek to do that in the appropriate way. So, um, no, it's, it's an open motion. So I need to we'll need to do a little bit of work to flesh it out, which I'm confident that we'll be able to. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I can see what Councillor Walker is trying to, to, to do, but I mean, I, I won't be supporting the alternative motion because, to me, the spirit, as I read it, the spirit of what Councillor Walker is trying to do is actually captured in the original motion. Because when I read that, Mr Mayor, and that's why I did ask those couple of questions at the start, the, the, the thing before us is saying that we agree to work with Reconciliation Tasmania to develop a Reconciliation Action Plan, and then it talks about a budget allocation. But when you actually get into the report, down the bottom of page 27, it says there are four types of RAP that an organisation can develop. Reflect, innovate, stretch and elevate. And the proposal for consideration is a reflect RAP. This would comprise the following steps. So the things that would be in this RAP that we speak of. On page 28, as we work through it, it spells out what would be involved. As we get about halfway down the, uh, the page, Point four, plan and schedule community consultation workshop sessions with Aboriginal community members and the broader community to inform them about this project. Reconciliation Tasmania is willing to be a part of this consultation process but suggests that this is done by COL staff and managers to ensure it is being led locally. So again, as I read this uh, information in front of me, it says to me that it is inviting Indigenous, uh, Aboriginal people to be involved. As I go to the bottom, it says, the RAPWG, the RAP Working Group, will consult with all staff and identified key stakeholders, including the Aboriginal community, providing an update on progress. So to me, Mr Mayor, when I read what's in front of us here, I believe it actually captures, I believe it captures what Councillor Walker's alternate motion is asking us to do. It spells out very clearly a number of steps and processes. And whilst, uh, and I did mention this to the RAP people that were with us, I've been involved in the RAP process. I've seen how it works. It's followed the steps that's outlined there. Uh, so to me, as I said, whilst I understand the intent of what Councillor Walker's doing, I believe it's captured in the original motion, which I will be supporting, but I can't support the amended motion. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Dawkins. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for those councillors who weren't in attendance in the workshop this morning, I'd just like to say we had a, an, a, a deep conversation around why this is inappropriate. It's because the Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre are not a part of Reconciliation Tasmania in a meaningful way. Now, if we ignore them in this opportunity, ignore the people who are represented by the Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre, we do ourselves and them a great disservice. They've been working in this space since the 70s. They've taken every opportunity, they've taken all the criticism. They've been criticised by every level of government, in fact, on a global scale. So if we're going to make this a meaningful plan, we need to first discuss it with them. In all honesty, we don't really expect it to be successful, but we have to try. If we don't try, we miss the best opportunity to engage with a group of people who do not believe they've been represented at this table or by this institution. I feel Whatever we do today is not going to be the ultimate success. There is no capacity in this room or in this state. If there had been, we would have done it by now, and we haven't, because it's a complex situation. Another group of middle-aged, middle-class white people discussing Aboriginal people in this kind of format, it never works. But we have to try. And if we do not support this alternative motion and give an opportunity 
for the Tasmanian Aboriginal Centre to represent themselves here, I think we're going to fail. Thank you, Councillor Dawkins. Any other speakers? Question, Councillor Sowers. Thanks, Mayor. Again, uh, a question, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sound obtuse. I'm just trying to get some clarity. As I, my question is, as I read that document that I quoted for on page 28, where it says, plan and schedule community consultation workshop sessions with Aboriginal community members in the broader community, would that not involve an invitation to the TAC? Yes. <laughs> yes, it would. Yeah, but the, can I just say the point of the motion is to have them included before we start that process, which we haven't done at this stage. That's what this motion is about. Any other speakers? Yeah. Councillor Finlay. At the risk of being cited as not speaking to something, which is not too dissimilar to a previous item that we had at Council here, there is nothing that indicates in this item that's in the paperwork before us that anyone would be ignored. In fact, it's completely the opposite. The intention of this item before Council was written in the documentation is to bring together those disparate members of the community who are either organisations or individuals, whether they be first Tasmanians or more recently arrived, to have a combined and connected conversation to seek to not acknowledge the intention that which it's written and to already start an aggressive and confrontational process at this point is really disappointing. Oh, thank you. Councillor Daking. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Walker, for your amended motion. My only uh, statement or comment is by deferring the original motion, are we actually doing any harm, or are we going to potentially do better than what the original motion is? Um, thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Question. Question, Deputy Mayor. Doesn't the original motion actually provide a framework for what actions would be undertaken and provide some certainty for a conversation and a way forward, as opposed to an open-ended Item 1 supports pursuing reconciliation with the Aboriginal community, which gives no actual framework for how that will occur, what process will be undertaken, what costing or resource would be allocated to it. Councillor Walker, you can answer that in your closing. Do you want, do you want to close? No, I don't think there's any other speakers. Would you like to close? Thank you, Mayor. I would like to close. Um, no one supposes that this is an easy task, you know, um, otherwise, as um, Councillor Dawkins eloquently put it, you know, this would have been done many, many, many years ago. Um, this is an extremely long process. To think that we can solve this mm -hmm. around this table today is um, quite absurd. Uh, uh, Councillor Finlay. We want to... We, uh, Mary, if I could, please. You could, but just refrain from making wild statements. You are. You didn't say that first. You mumbled. We want, we want to get this right. That, I'm sure, we, we could all agree with. We want to get this right. And I'm not saying that we will do nothing. In fact, you know, you know I might be so bold to say that I, more than many people, want to do something in this space. But this is about building relationships. And if the first step that we take is to ostracise a particular group within the Aboriginal community, then we've already lost the debate and the discussion. If I can refer to a few comments that did come from around the table, um, and I appreciate everyone's contribution, uh, Councillor Soward made um, a series of points regarding the contents of the original motion, and he did actually read the preamble which says, that we agree to work with Reconciliation Tasmania. This goes to the heart of the issue. This goes to the heart of the fact that we're agreeing to work with a particular group who are doing their best to create reconciliation in Tasmania, but they do not re represent the broad Aboriginal community. They represent a part of the community, not the whole community. What I'm saying to the Council today is if we want this to work, if we want this to be at all successful, rather than just um, a, a, 
a um, hollow attempt at reconciliation, then we do need to um, communicate with the broader community. Um, Councillor Dakin asked if we're doing harm, if we were to defer this. I can understand that Reconciliation Tasmania may feel um, a little aggrieved if we don't immediately move forward with this, but I'm sure that they can understand that as a council, we have um, a, a, a duty to our um, broader community to consult. Um, and, you know, when it comes to suggesting, as Councillor Finlay did, that this is an aggressive and confrontational approach, I would say that, you know, on the contrary, I'm wanting to be more inclusive and, and to speak to a wide range of people in the Aboriginal community. This is different than an organisation perhaps wanting to go through a process of reconciliation. This is a government body, this is a council that, that needs to represent the entire community. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Those against? So three against, the rest are four. The motion is carried. So we move on to 19.1, the budget amendments. Move, Councillor McKenzie. Seconded. Seconder. Councillor Sauer, thank you. Wish to speak to Councillor McKenzie? Oh, I will, because it, it is a reasonably long document um, of various things, but I think that they are reasonably uh, uh, straightforward when you take them bit by bit. Uh, first of all, I think there are statements where, where we're basically amending the budget to reflect the fact that we've received grant funds that weren't in the budget, so we now need to bring them to account. I think we also need to reflect where we receive monies from uh, people who lease property from us who are actually making contributions to our property to actually increase the value of the assets that we're actually, uh, we, we've actually done some work to. Uh, and likewise, the other way around, where we've actually thought we were going to get some grants in our budget and they haven't been received yet and will be in a later stage. So it's just rectifying the budget to reflect what's actually happened. The other parts of the motion uh, deal with uh, items where when you send out in a budget you think that it might be capital so you put it into the capital ca category uh, but when you get to the end of the ac actual item you find that it actually forms a part of our operating uh, expenditure and therefore needs to be moved out of capital to operating and likewise vice versa where there are items that go the other way. So whilst it looks complex uh, and a lot of items in there, they're all reasonably logical as to how they happen and some of those things are as a result of not being able to be managed from the, from the council's perspective, it's because that's just the way things happen uh, in an evolving process. I guess the only thing that I just wanted to, to raise in there, we had a couple of amendments at the end where there are some significant uh, overruns, uh, one in relation to the CH Smith car park which relates to a stamp duty issue by and large in relation to the property which we believed at the initial stages that we weren't going to need to pay that amount of stamp duty which unfortunately we've lost that case. Uh, and the second one is in relation to the mall which is about a $670,000 uh, change. So I'd just like to ask the general manager to elaborate on the, uh, on the nature of that, that overspend. Thank you, General Manager. Thanks, Mr Mayor. So, so the project was completed within the, the designated budget. Post-construction, there's been a, a series of variations with the contractor that have needed to be negotiated. Um, they have been settled now, and that, that, that um, increased figure of the 670 is to, um, to deal with those variations. I would just note that as an overall project, the City Heart project is still on, on budget, uh, but clearly there's um, swings and roundabouts, if you like, um, across the different projects. So. Thank you. Councillor Soward. Thanks, Mayor. And um, just to add to Councillor McKenzie's remarks, I'd like to um, acknowledge the hard work uh, Acting Director Gimple and his team does. So the thing that I really like, Mr Mayor, and again, for the benefits of the community, it's all spelled out very, very clearly there what this is all about, what the amendments uh, relate to, etc. Some of them are, as I often say, a really, really good problem to have. So, for instance, on page 34, we've worked in with uh, the State Government, the AFL and Cricket Australia, on uh, providing female-friendly facilities at a couple of different sports grounds for rapidly growing sports, one of those being 
up at Youngtown Oval and South Launceston, Mr Mayor, as you would know, won the first AFLW Grand Final on the weekend, which was terrific for them. But uh, it explains very, very clearly why these uh, funds have been allocated the way they have. So anyone out there that wants to uh, wax lyrical uh, on social media and other places about how Council's finances work and so on, it's all there in black and white, very, very clearly justified. It explains where the grant money's come from, etc., etc. Very transparent, and I commend uh, Acting Director Gimple and his team on their hard work. Thank you. Any other speakers? Wish to close, Councillor McKenzie? I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. 19.2. Move, Councillor McKenzie. Second to Councillor Sauer. Do you wish to speak to it? I Council think it's uh, set in the first page where it's really reflecting the changes that have just been uh, passed. Mm. Thank you. Councillor Sowd? As per my earlier remarks, thank you, Mr Mayor. So, happy to... We move the motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. That is carried. Annual plan, 19.3. Move, Councillor McKenzie. Second to Councillor Sowd. Councillor McKenzie, you wish to speak to it? how we are operating in relation to the plan that we put in last year, showing which, uh, which items are on track, finished, um, and those that may be slightly off track in relation to various things. So I think that you know, the outline in there and the detail in the attachments will give you far more detail about it. And I guess the, the one that probably just pops its head out at me is our wayfinding uh, connectivity implementation, which has been a long-standing uh, item on this agenda and changed uh, many different ways. But I do note in the, in the detail in there that that's about to hit the streets of Brisbane Street, I think, very shortly. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that happening because I think, you know, quite frankly, that we, we are lacking that. And you know, I think to see that project actually come into fruition is something that's actually going to really put a bit of a beacon to the, to, to the city. So um, I endorse the plan. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, question? Yes, just that's raised a good um, query in my mind. Where are we at with the style guide that's been um, in development for the last kind of four or five years with regard to signage and the like? I know a whole range of new styles are springing up around the city and they're inconsistent with, you know, any kind of coordinated approach. I'm sure collectively once we arrive at the new style, that will be the style. I'm just wondering where that is all at. Thank you. General Manager will pass it on to Simon Tennant. Um, all the new signs that are being rolled out are in adherence to our style guide, which came before Council at a workshop last year. Subsequent question, is the waste voucher that we received in the mail um, also in adherence to the style guide? Is that the, does that adhere to that, those guidelines as well? The, the waste voucher didn't come to me before it was sent out. Okay, so. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sauer, do you wish to speak? Councillor Dawkins. Um, thank you. I think it's a fantastic plan. The strategic priorities are laid out clearly. I will say this as we say around a lot of items like this, communicating this to the public is so important. We receive um, weekly or even sometimes daily criticism about what Council's doing and more and more, more voices, unfortunately, every week seem to add, the, add their voice to that. Um, this plan lays out very clearly our strategic priorities. So if there's a way that we can not just try and communicate it once, but to continue to communicate this, and not just on the council website, unfortunately, because people just seem to turn away from those official looking websites. So that's the only thing I would say. Fantastic document. I read it through and I agreed with almost all of it. Um, but I want to make sure that those in the community that would have something to say about council do get to see it as well. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor McKenzie, wish to close? I do, Mayor, because I found something else in there that I was going to comment on, uh, because I was trying to work out actually how it related to the annual plan, but the strategic plan, which is actually attached as part of this item, uh, was something I think that uh, Bohr mentioned, just on the basis that there are a number of items uh, in there that I think are important, and particularly, uh, I think in a fortnight's time, we're going to see a, uh, an issue regarding climate change. Uh, that's going to come before this council to discuss. And it's interesting to see one of our priority areas is a city in touch with its region. Um, 
Deputy. No, this is not the one I was looking at. No. Uh, no. City and Values and Environment. Sorry, the next one, sorry. On the next page, which I think is Priority Area 5. And whilst you know, you know, I'm endorsing the sort of uh, bringing of that motion to the to this thing, I think it's important to note the things that the city are actually doing, you know, to reduce the impacts of the natural environment, build resilience and the changing intensity of natural hazards, to contribute to air and river quality and long system by liaising with the community, business and other stakeholders to manage the risks and climate related events, particularly in the area of stormwater management to enhance community awareness and resilience to uncertain weather patterns, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a lot that the Council is already undertaking in this area. So whilst we might bring this up as something important for us to debate at the next Council, I think it's very important to note that we as a Council are actually actively doing that and it's very much part of our strategy. Thank you. Uh, could I put the motion? All those in favour, please raise your hand. And that is all councillors present. I'd like to hand the meeting over to Count, uh, Deputy Mayor. I'm just going to head off to a funeral. So. Thank you, Deputy. Second, thank you, Councillor Finlay. Councillor Mackenzie, do you wish to speak? Look, I think it's just really a roll on from what we've previously spoken about, so I don't think I'll add anything further. Thank you, Councillor Finlay. Does any councillor wish to make a contribution? For those councillors in favour, please raise your hand. That's all councillors present. The motion is carried. Now move to item 20, General Manager's Directorate items, specifically item 20.1, the City Deal Extension by 10 years, moved by Councillor Soward, seconder. Councillor Spencer. Councillor Soward, do you wish to speak? Thanks, uh, Deputy. Look, um, I think this is a terrific thing. I've been a very, very passionate supporter of the theory behind the City Deal because, as I said and I've said and I'll continue to say, when I first... Uh, was elected to council uh, as, as a newcomer coming in. What I used to see at times was local government moving in one direction, state government somewhere else, federal government somewhere else, and never the twain met, unfortunately. What I see with this is three tiers of government working together, which means, as it spells out very clearly in our documentation, uh, I guess some real strategy, some real targeted funding. It talks on page 61 about the dollar figure investment, the cross-collaboration. Um, all of us uh, at different times get frustrated with governments of all persuasions at all levels, but when you've got three tiers of government working together, theoretically and, and in reality, the outcomes, in my belief, are always better. So to have this uh, extended, I think, is a great thing because, as it says very, very clearly in the documentation, it talks about allowing us to undertake uh, planning going forward. So um, a massive acknowledgement of the hard work of Corinda Shelton uh, in this area because uh, I think at the time, uh, Deputy, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but we might have been the second city deal rolled out behind, I'm seeing nods, so that's um, on the money, which is good, which is a bit of a guess. The second one, I think, behind Townsville. So um, it's a great thing, I think, that formal extension. The recommendation before us, uh, Deputy, uh, talks about us agreeing to the extension talks about that we, uh, through the General Manager, write to the Minister, advising of our agreement, and then request the General Manager to commence the preparation for the City Deal three-year review. So we're very well prepared to discuss and agree to the new commitments delivered in the extended period. So again, I think it's a great thing. I think it's been great so far. And uh, that surety, to me, is a really, really important thing, the surety around that 10-year period. And uh, I'm very much in favour of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Soward. Councillor Spencer, would you like to speak? Thanks, Deputy. Yeah, I agree with it. It's uh, more money for lots of things, so anything for more money to help us, I'm, I'm agreeing to. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McKenzie. Uh, I love the money talk, Councillor Spencer. Um, uh, to, to, me, to me, the reality of this is, is and I think to sort of really say what, uh, a little bit differently to what... Uh, uh, Councillor Sowards, it is really, it's about an articulation of a vision 
which is shared by all three levels of government, which I think is something that has been sadly lacking. I mean, we'll still go and try and get our, our promises every time there's an election come up, but it's far better that all these are targeted into something which is working together in a direction which everybody sees the benefits for in the long term. And I think that's the real benefit of what's happening here, is that the federal government, the state government and the city are talking about our projects in advance and planning for them and the city, the city heart, not city heart deal, the, uh, the city deal is actually now helping deliver it. And I think what I really like also in there, there's an accountability uh, uh, activity in there as well. So as we go through that process, we need to be accountable back to each of those levels of government as to how we're performing in relation to the key criteria which are set in there. So I think that's good because it's a, a good uh, balance and measure structure. So well, I'm very supportive of the ex extension of the deal. Thank you, Councillor McKenzie. Anyone else to speak to this very important matter? No? Councillor Sauer, would you like to close? All those in favour, raise their hand. It's all councillors present. The motion is carried. We now move to 20.2, the Launceston Flood Authority appointment of directors. Mover. Thank you, Councillor Soward. Seconder, please. Councillor McKenzie. Councillor Soward, would you like to speak to the item? Just very briefly, uh, Deputy, it does acknowledge the, uh, in the report the process that was followed, expressions of interest were invited, 11 applications uh, were received, which is great, a good, good number of applications, and after the deliberations uh, occurred, uh, three candidates are highlighted there, Jeff Brayford, Greg Priest, and Robin McKendrick as the preferred candidates. It explains there that all three have a strong working knowledge of the levy system, uh, and as we, we know, uh, Jeff Brayford is a former uh, director of this council. Greg Priest, a long-standing uh, general manager uh, with significant expertise in the local government area. And uh, former alderman, long-serving alderman Robin McKendrick, uh, who's uh, obviously been involved with council for a significant period of time, over 30 years. So uh, it explains there uh, the idea of the uh, staggered process of the director's appointment, which... Uh, is to allow succession planning, which I personally think is a great thing, so everyone's not retiring at the same time. All very straightforward. Just uh, saying, in conclusion, Deputy, terrific to see so many applicants and uh, even more terrific to see such high-quality uh, candidates uh, nominated for the positions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Soward. Councillor McKenzie, as the second I wish to speak. Councillor Dawkins. Thank you. Um, the last... Um, authority didn't always um, plough themselves in glory, especially when it came to discussions around global heating. So I think in this instance it's good that there's a change of guard. Um, I hope that this is a more progressive organisation. Uh, I note that there are no women appointed to this board and that always concerns me. I believe that we always do better together. Um, it's a shame there's not a female scientist. I think that that's a real um, missed opportunity. But we still are unsure about the tracer analysis of sediment redistribution, and I think until that report's released, people are going to be a bit concerned that there's something to hide here. So um, I wish the new committee well and hope to see a more progressive organisation. Thank you, Councillor Dawkins. Any other contributions from around the table? Councillor Soward, anything further? All those in favour, raise their hand. That is all councillors present and the motion is carried. There being no further business, the meeting is closed. This council meeting starts at 1pm local time. Streaming is paused during breaks. Audio streaming of today's